All right, today we're going to talk about uh, two of the gas laws. These are gas laws named after two people. We're going to talk about Boyle's Law and Charles' Law. And to start with Boyle's Law, and this is named after Robert Boyle. He discovered that doubling the pressure on a sample of gas while keeping the temperature constant reduced its volume by exactly one half. So he doubled the pressure, reduced the volume. Okay, so this kind of goes along with what we learned about the uh, kinetic molecular theory and how pressure works. So the pressure is caused by the gases, the gas particles moving against the containers of the wall. And when the volume is decreased, more of those collisions happen, the pressure increases. And conversely, if the volume is increased, you have less collision. You have a bigger volume for the gas to move through and less collisions occur against the sides of the container and the pressure is decreased. So we're talking about Boyle's Law here is pressure and volume and that relationship while the temperature is constant. So temperature is constant in the whole time in Boyle's Law, pressure and volume change. Okay, so this is a little graph of how the pressure and volume change relative to each other. And you can see as the pressure goes up, the volume goes down. Okay, and as the pressure decreases, the volume increases. And we're going to do a little lab on this one where you guys can actually get this graph and duplicate Boyle's little experiment here. So Boyle's law states that the volume of a fixed mass, so that we're not adding any more, taking any away, varies inversely with the pressure at constant temperature. So the inverse variation means as pressure goes up, volume goes down. As volume goes up, pressure goes down. That's an inverse relationship. And the, applying the values of those uh, pressure temp, pressure volume numbers looks like the curve we have here. Okay, so mathematically, Boyle's law is the pressure times the volume equals some constant. Okay, so and that's this is gets an inverse relationship. So a lot of students get this mixed up and say because well they're they're on the same one multiplied by the other they think well they're it's a um, direct relationship, but it's actually inverse. As pressure goes up, then to keep this constant, it has, the volume has to go down. So think of this as, you know, uh, as the constant equal to some number like 10. So if pressure is 5, volume is 2. So if I put the um, volume um, up to 5, then the pressure has to be to 2. Or if I put the volume up to 10, the pressure has to go down to 1. Or if the pressure goes up to 10, the volume has to go down to 1. So it's that kind of mathematical relationship. Okay, so the product is constant. And when, two, when it's a product is constant, we can, if we change the pressure or the volume, that it's, they're going to still, that, that product is still going to be the same value. So if we have an initial pressure and temperature, and volume, I keep saying that, if we have initial pressure and volume, then that product is going to be equal if we change either the pressure or the volume or both. That's going to be equal to the new pressure and the new volume. Okay, so most of the time, you know, the P1 and the P and the V1 represent the initial conditions, and the the twos represent uh, the conditions we change it to. And most of the time on these, all these equations, all the problems you're given, you're going to be given two, three out of these four variables, and you have to solve for the fourth one, okay? So you'll be given the initial pressure and volume and one new volume or new pressure and solve for the one you don't know, okay? So a typical problem looks like this. A sample of oxygen gas has a volume of 150 milliliters. The pressure is 0.947 atmospheres. So what would the volume be, what would the other gas at a pressure of that? So we increase the pressure a little bit, and the temperature remains constant. Okay, so the temperature, this is Boyle's Law. We have volume and pressure, temperature constant. Okay, so these are our initial conditions, right? With the pressure, we have, I mean, the volume, we have the pressure, and we have a new pressure. So our objective here is to figure out the new volume, volume 2. So if we rearrange these two equations, if we solve for this variable V2, it'll look like this. So we have the pressure times the volume, the initial pressure times the initial volume divided by the new pressure, okay? 
So the solution is to get that relationship, then we would just plug in our numbers to that equation we had, the initial temperature uh, pressure times the volume divided by the new volume gives us a smaller volume than we had before. And that makes sense because we have more pressure, we're going to have less volume. But this product, this the two products are going to be the same. So this 0.947 times 150 is going to equal 144 times 0.987. Okay, so you got to check your answer. Does it make sense? Did we increase the pressure. That should have decreased the volume. That makes sense. So check your answers when you do that, that you've got the right relationship going. Okay, so that's Boyle's Law. Now we're going to talk about Charles' Law. Um, Charles' Law, we're going to talk about volume and temperature relationships and we're going to keep the pressure constant in this one and see what happens to the gases when when we do that okay so when the temperature increased and we don't change the um, the number of gas molecules then the volume increases and as long as the pressure stays constant so at a higher temperature then this goes by the kinetic uh, molecular theory too. the gas molecules move faster they collide with the walls with more and more force so that's going to if the pressure stays the same it the volume has to expand so we'd have to have some kind of flexible container maybe something like a uh, balloon or a piston or something like that something that can the volume can move as the temperature increases Okay, so Jacques Charles discovered this in 1787. That's why we are named after him. And he found that the volume changes by 1 270th of the original volume for each degree Celsius at constant pressure. And then he you know, started the initial at zero, which is good. And this is how they got the, ne the negative 273 for the absolute zero. And they, we created the Kelvin scale to... Um, work with the, these gas um, properties here. So absolute zero is a continuation of decreasing the volume. Where would the temperature be to get have to get the volume to be to zero? Well, it would be at negative 273. So that's what we use all the time in these gas laws is we use the Kelvin temperature because that's what the, the volume is proportional to the Kelvin temperature, not the Celsius. So we, we're given these data in Celsius degrees. We have to add 273 to it. So we work in Kelvin all the time when we're doing these gas pressure temperature changes. So Charles Law states that the volume of a fixed mass of a gas at constant pressure varies directly with Kelvin temperature. So as the temperature goes up, so does the volume. Okay. It's higher temperature and bigger volume. Okay, and so it looks like this. This is a direct relationship on a graph. Okay, so mathematically, the volume equals um, the constant times um, the temperature, right? So we to get that constant is some multiplier to equal the volume and the temperature, or the volume over the temperature equals a constant number. So this is the way. It's commonly written that the volume over temperature equals a constant. And that ratio is the same for any volume. So it's the same kind of thing we did with Boyle's Law. We're going to set if that volume, initial volume over temperature is equal to a constant. If we, so if we change it to a new volume and a new temperature, the V2, the T2, that fraction ratio is going to stay the same. So... Uh, the initial conditions are the V1, the T1, and the new conditions are V2, T2. So the same kind of thing, we're going to get problems. We get three out of these four things. you got to solve the one you don't know. So a typical problem looks like this. Sample of neon gas occupies a volume of 752 milliliters at 25 degrees. What volume will the gas occupy at 50 degrees C and the pressure remains constant. So Charles Law, we're dealing with volume and temperature, but no pressure. The pressure remains constant. The constant pressure is not involved in this. 
So here's our initial conditions, right? And we note that we have to change these Celsius temperatures to Kelvin. Every time we work with temperatures in these gas laws, we have to add 273 to change in Kelvin. We only work with Kelvin, these gas laws, all of them only work with the Kelvin temperature scale. So you can't use Celsius, even though they have the same, you know, one degree Kelvin is equal to one degree C, but for the proportions to work, they have to be, the temperatures have to be in Kelvin. Okay, so we're trying to find the new volume. So we're going to set this up. We're going to solve this to find V2. So to do that, we just multiply both sides by T2. And we get V1 times T2 divided by T1. Okay, so we know three of these things. So we're going to plug those into our rearranged equation here. And it looks like this. So our new volume will be at this lower temperature we're going to have a higher volume and that makes sense for the stuff we've just just gone over so this fraction the the milliliters over this fraction and if we raise the temperature keep the pressure the same we're going to have to increase the volume to have that pressure be the same to have the same number of collisions per area of the uh, container because we've speeded up the the molecules we need to have more volume so that pressure the times it hits the side of the container um, is going to be the same okay so that's a snapshot of the two first two laws we're going to do um, some other gas laws on the next video but um, answer the questions on the form below and I'll see you guys in class tomorrow